This week at Starbase, while teams continue their work on the chopsticks around the clock, Starhopper is removed from the launch site, Test Tank 16 is cryo-tested at the Massey Outpost, and Ship 31 is sent there to begin its static fire test campaign. Now let's dig into this week's update. To kick it off this week, a pump truck was set up to place more concrete near the new launch tower on Friday morning. Mirroring last week's work at Pad A, bumpers were installed on the port chopstick on Saturday as flight preparations continue for Flight 5. A pre-assembled steel segment was added above the port chopstick's hydraulic piston on Sunday. This steel might be for protective shielding over the actuator system. Monday saw the ship lifting pin arms on the chopsticks deployed for the first time in quite a while. Notably, the actual pins that engage with the lifting points on the ship were missing from the arms during this test. The booster quick disconnect was extended on the orbital launch mount as pad engineers gave the system a checkout for the first time in several weeks. A fast retraction test was performed on the quick disconnect system about an hour later. It was re-extended shortly afterward. A raceway section was brought out of Star Factory on Tuesday and moved into Mega Bay 1 for integration. With the protective bumpers in place on both of the arms, the landing rails were given another check, raising and lowering on the chopsticks. After being raised again, the rails were lowered on the chopsticks. The port arm was then slowly swung out over the next several minutes. Change is constant at Starbase, and nothing is exempt. Starhopper, a fixture at the launch site since its first flight in 2019, became the latest focus of change. Luckily, unlike many others, as seen here by Anthony Gomez from the Rocket Ranch, the change was just relocation from the launch site to the auxiliary parking lot across Highway 4. The move frees up space for the ever-growing propellant handling and storage systems and improved site access to the launch pads. A ship forward flap was rolled out of storage and brought into Star Factory, where it will be integrated with the nose cone section of the next Starship. Shortly after midnight on Wednesday, and under the watchful eye of some launch pad crewmen, the landing rails were raised and lowered once more as workers continue to dial in the system. A couple of hours after the first flap was taken into Star Factory, the second forward flap for the next Starship was brought in for integration. Following the actuator testing of the ship lifting pins, the mechanisms were removed from the chopsticks and replaced starting with the port arm, followed by the starboard arm. As rain fell at the build site, a new white painted stand was brought over from Sanchez and taken into Star Factory. Preparations for additional concrete placement began near the second launch tower, where crews have been busy with the new construction for the past several months. After 40 minutes of preparation, concrete placement began at the second tower complex, with the pump truck's boom repositioning every few minutes. Late in the evening, the Starship static fire stand was brought from Sanchez to the build site for Ship 31 static fire test campaign. Crews began loading counterweights onto self-propelled modular transporters on Thursday, ahead of the upcoming trip to the Massey outpost. Over at the launch site, the recently replaced ship lifting pins were redeployed on the chopsticks as crews looked to make sure everything was up to spec. As we returned to the build site, Starship 31 rolled out of the high bay early in the morning and turned towards Mega Bay 2 as workers prepared to place the ship on the static fire test stand. While workers finished getting ready, Ship 31 was left to wait outside the high bay. Eventually, the ship was moved to Mega Bay 2, stopping outside the door. As the sun rose over Starbase, the door to the Mega Bay was raised and Ship 31 was rolled inside. The two-point lifter was then brought out for the stand swap. Meanwhile, at the launch site, the chopsticks on Tower 1 were raised to the launch position. With the two-point lifter locked in place around Ship 31, the ship was lifted off of the build stand and the testing stand was wheeled into the building. The ship was then rotated into the correct position and lowered onto the stand, giving us a great view of the partly tiled heat shield. 
Outside the bays, a pair of excavators were hard at work regrading the area of the old ring yard. Working from the top of Tower 1, the chopsticks began a series of low-speed opening and closing tests, simulating a booster catch from different angles on the tower, presumably to characterize the system's behavior from this height. Thursday night, Test Tank 16 was undergoing a fresh round of testing at the Massey Outpost. Due to the darkness, it's hard to tell exactly what was taking place, but the tank was clearly loaded with cryogenics. It seems likely that there were some structural tests performed, as well as the use of hydraulic actuators on that stand. Just a few hours later, up the road at the build site, Ship 31, now on the static fire stand, was rolled out of Mega Bay 2. As the calendar flipped over to midnight, the potential Flight 6 Starship was moved on to Highway 4 for its latest trip to the Massey Outpost, this time for its static fire campaign. This week at the Cape, Signet Warhorse returned to Port Canaveral on Friday, towing a short fall of Gravitas and the remains of Falcon 9 Booster 1062. The veteran booster was destroyed when one of the legs failed on touchdown. The booster then tipped over and its pressurized tanks exploded. The cause of the failure is still under investigation. The engine section of Booster 1062 was removed from a short fall of Gravitas on Saturday. This gave us a look at the inside of the rocket's fuel tank and cleared the way for future missions after the FAA cleared the Falcon 9 to return to flight. Space Perspective's MS Voyager arrived at Port Canaveral just before noon. Space Perspective is a space tourism company offering high altitude views from the edge of space with a balloon. The part that passengers ride up on under the balloon was then loaded onto the MS Voyager. Go Cosmos returned to port on Monday, carrying the fairing halves from the Starlink Group 8-10 mission. Signet Warhorse 3 brought Just Read the Instructions and Falcon 9 Booster 1069 back to port, having successfully performed the return to flight launch of 21 Starlink V2 mini satellites. The Falcon was quickly taken off Just Read the Instructions and set down on the dockside stand as crews made haste to make up for lost time. SpaceX support ship Bob headed out to sea ahead of the Starlink Group 8-11 launch, which would take place on Thursday morning. Signet Warhorse 1 brought Just Read the Instructions out to join Bob in supporting the upcoming Starlink mission. Ariane Group's Canopy, their unique and pioneering hybrid cargo ship, designed to transport their Ariane 6 rockets efficiently with the assistance of its four-wing sails, arrived at the Cape with the European service module for Artemis 3. The Pegasus Barge arrived at Port Canaveral on Tuesday, carrying parts of a future Artemis mission. Space Perspective's MS Voyager headed out to sea, possibly for sea trials and recovery training. The offshore supply ship Harvey Stone brought Blue Origin's landing ship Jacqueline into Port Canaveral for the first time on Wednesday. The company is working towards the first flight of their new Glenn rocket, which is now tentatively scheduled for its debut launch in November, following the postponement this week of NASA's escapade mission to no earlier than spring 2025. Wrapping up its stay at the docks, Falcon 9 Booster 1069 was laid down for transport back to Roberts Road. The Pegasus Barge reached the Kennedy Space Center turn basin on Thursday. Tugs then guided the barge to the dock for unloading. Following a 24-hour weather delay, Falcon 9 Booster 1077 lifted off with Starlink Group 8-11, carrying another 21 V2 mini satellites, including 13 with direct-to-cell capability. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update with a splash of Blue Origin brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.